Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. It was an incredible comeback from Pep Guardiola's City as they turned around a 2 0 deficit to romp to a 4 2 win thanks to Alvarez, Haaland, and Mares after Kulusevsky and Emerson put Spurs ahead. But what tactics allowed this enthralling comeback? Let's take a look. And we'll focus on City for the most part, but we will touch on Spurs as well. When City had the ball deeper, Spurs could press strategically, as we saw for their opener, but for the most part they were happy to sit a little bit deeper. The City shape was a base 4-2-3-1, but as we know, they don't tend to stay in these positions, with Alvarez pushing up into the right half space, Gundogan into the left half space, and Lewis essentially being a midfielder, with Stones and Akanji shifting across so that City had their preferred 3-2-5 attacking shape. Spurs' deep to mid block could be effective at times, as we would often see Betancourt and Hoiberg looking to go man to man with the City double pivot. However, the obvious disadvantage of this is that it could potentially leave space between the lines, and Gundogan and Alvarez could both be dynamic in their movement, looking to drop in temporarily to be the extra man to then receive between the lines to turn and run at the defence. So initially we see that Hoiberg is looking to close down Rodri and Betancourt is on Lewis who has inverted. As the play develops, both still have one eye on their opposing pivot, meaning Gundogan is in space between the lines. He then receives and can play in Alvarez putting City in a dangerous position. Spurs could deal with this situation in different ways, as they were looking to keep pressure on the City pivots to avoid them building up too easily. So what we could see is that when a man dropped deep, Romero, Davis and Dyer could be aggressive in following their men when they drop deep. And this is because on this particular day, especially early on, City weren't dynamic enough to take advantage of space left between the defenders when a man was pressing higher up, so Spurs could look comfortable following their men deep. Here's a perfect example of that, as the Spurs pivots are higher and we see Gundogan looking to drop into this little pocket, but Romero is willing to break rank in order to prevent him receiving the ball in a dangerous region, and Emerson tucking in means they maintain a good structure. But what Spurs also did well was tuck in both of their wingers in Kulusevski and Son. What this would mean is that they were much more likely to cover the passing lane into the men in the half spaces, even when they did drop deep. So even if a City man had the ball, it would be difficult for them to play the pass into the man who had dropped between the lines, as it was now covered. But in general, when City's wider centre-backs did get onto the ball, Son and Kulusevski would then press, because Conte didn't want City to advance without facing any opposition. So at times what we would see is Stones looking to move wider early on in order to draw Son out and this would then open up that passing lane once again to the man who dropped between the lines, at least forcing a man to have to spring from the back line. So here Stones has moved wider early, meaning that Son will have to come and confront him to prevent him pushing high. This now opens up another passing lane for Alvarez to drop into, and he gets onto the ball, but Davis follows him deep well, keeping that pressure applied. So with the Spurs wingers helping to cover the centre well, it meant that the space was out wide. And for the most part, Spurs were comfortable with these 1 vs 1 situations, as Emerson was able to, for the most part, deal with Grealish, forcing him to play backwards or to come infield to more traffic, where the Spurs midfield could then drop in order to make progression much more difficult. And even in the first half, Perisic was fairly effective in dealing with Mares, for the most part making it difficult for him to turn and face the goal. So, Mars was often forced backwards, often into Lewis who was supporting him on the inside. But here's the problem with 1v1s. As a defensive team, you can be perfect for 95% of 1 vs 1s, but it only takes those few opportunities where the winger does get past his man individually to make the difference, and that's what we saw with Mares for the first and third goals. So this was a unique situation as Spurs had attacked, so Son was caught higher up, where usually he would have been in this position tucked in and cutting off the route into Lewis. So now Lewis is instead able to receive, drive up the pitch and find Mares in this one versus one. And in the first half, Perisic dealt with these situations well, but on this occasion, Mares does get past him, leading to the goal. For the second, we can see that Spurs were comfortable in their rough man-to-man -man situation. And again, it's a man-to-man -man situation and Perisic just mistimes his movement, so now Mares is past him. And this leads to the deflected goal. 
But another thing that allowed the comeback was a slight tweak to the general attacking structure by Pep. In the first half, when City were high up in control possession, their shape morphed into a 2-3-5 that looked like this, and Ake was the more aggressive fullback in terms of looking to overlap early on. And that was because Lewis is much better at tucking in and using his on the ball ability, so Ake would be forced wide. But what we saw in the second half is that Pep was much more willing to have Lewis move wide to support Mares early. So that now, instead of man to man situations, City could try and force a 2 vs 1 temporarily before Son could come across to cover. This would also give Mares more scope to drift infield and look to cause havoc in this region. And we see that for the second. So we see Lewis has pushed up higher early to support Mares. So now Mares has the option of going wide to Lewis, who Perisic has to keep an eye on, or cutting infield. And Perisic, initially having to keep an eye on Lewis, has opened up the slightest gap that Mahrez can attack, leading to a goal. But this shape is not perfect, as when there is a transition, Rodri is now isolated in the centre, but it was a risk that Pep had to take. Still, Spurs could look dangerous on the transition. Lewis is high up early, and now Rodri is the only central midfielder, so Son can receive the ball in this space and attack. But let's quickly touch on Spurs in possession. City were looking to be much more aggressive in their press, but they could look very vulnerable in doing so. Haaland would lead the press, and City were much more aggressive with their wingers when defending, with Mahrez and Grealish looking to push in onto the wider centre-backs. Alvarez from this more attacking midfield role would then look to push onto Hoiberg, with Gundogan joining him on press in this second pivot, leaving Rodri in behind to patrol this region. But the key is, Conte was highly aggressive with his use of his wingbacks, who pushed high up early, allowing Son and Kulusevski in field. So now, one or both of these men could drop in between the lines, and Rodri could not cover both of them. And unlike Spurs, City don't have a back five, so if a centre back was to follow, it would leave a much bigger hole in the defence. But if they stayed deep, a man could potentially receive between the lines, and then run at the defence. It would even be difficult for the fullback to press because the wingback was so aggressive that they would now potentially be in space. So here we see City's usual press, Grealish on Romero, Mares on Davis and Haaland and Dyer. This time Romero had moved inside but we see Kulusevski dropping deep forces the fullback and Ake higher up the pitch. This means there's a massive gap here that Kulusevski can then look to attack. And this eventually leads to Perisic hitting the post via Rico Lewis. So what we saw is after City went ahead to avoid these potential overloads out wide, Grealish and Mahrez began to defend the wing backs instead, giving the wider centre backs that space. And this would allow the likes of Lewis and Ake to remain freer to follow men when they drop deep. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love this one, explaining in depth how Haaland has changed City's playing style. But overall, for this match, it was shaping up to be a typical City vs Spurs match, and the major difference in the second half was the increased intensity, with Mahrez coming alive, supported by Lewis. For the tactical score, despite Spurs going 2-0 up, it was mainly through City errors, and they weren't the most menacing going forward, so Conte earns a 5, and City may have won, but still look far from their best, looking lethargic in the first half, so Pep earns a 6.5. But what are your ratings? Drop them down below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, you might enjoy the content available on my Patreon. Not only does Patreon help to support the continued production of content, as I am a one-man team, but it also gives you early access to videos that will come on the channel. You'll also get exclusive videos, get to vote on polls, and so much more, and it's cheaper than ever, no longer having a tier system, so everyone on the Patreon gets access to all the content. So head over to patreon.com slash football made simple to check it out. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.